This episode of the Jeep Talk Show is brought to you by ExtremeTerrain.com, the number one Jeep authority for all things related to the YJ, TJ, JK, and yes, even the new JL Wranglers. Extreme Terrain is dedicated to providing the most accurate information and top-notch customer service for the hottest, newest, most in-demand Jeep parts around. If you want a Wrangler, then you need to visit ExtremeTerrain.com today. Episode 312, December 21st, 2017. Here comes XJ Talk, here comes XJ Talk, all up in your ears. Tony and Doing Josh give you lots of good all throughout the year. Talk about jerkies and jeeps and stuff and probably some other things too. So tis the season, this Everyone. is the reason we're bringing this to you. Here comes XJ Talk, here comes XJ Talk, all up in your ears. The end of the world came, and wouldn't you know it, we're all still alive and here. From 2012. The X-Day talk show is back <laughs> and better than ever, and it's really no fuss. We sure do appreciate all the support, so thanks for listening to us. Oh. Five years ago, you drag that out of the archives. <laughs> Five years ago. It's not great. even doing the show anymore. It's, it's great. In Windows, you just type in Christmas <laughs> and all this wonderful stuff comes up. Oh. <laughs> For F's sake. <laughs> Josh, I'm surprised you don't. You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4. Radio Network podcast. <laughs> Are you ready? Josh certainly it's wasn't. <laughs> With Tammy on Wrangler. Tony and Josh on Cherokee. So sit back. Strap in. And brace yourselves. Local Jeep News, National Jeep News, and news from around the world. It's This Week in Jeep. And This Week in Jeep is brought to you by Amazon.com. Hey, it's not too late to get that last-minute gift in for that special someone, especially with Amazon Prime. Fast, free, two-day shipping on most items, even Jeep parts. Be sure to use our link, jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon. Not only will you be able to find the perfect gift, you'll be helping support the Jeep Talk Show, too. That's jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon. And thanks in advance. So who wants a free Jeep? You guys know that I'm yeah, right. You guys know that I'm always on the lookout for Jeep giveaways. I mean, who wouldn't want a free Jeep, right? Well, in the words of the infamous Steve Harvey, we got a good one for you tonight, folks. Here is your opportunity to win one of two brand new limited edition black armored Jeep Wranglers plus ten thousand dollars towards prize taxes. Yeah, to enter, all you gotta do is call eight six 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 hundred zero six four six toll free or enter online at www.dreamgiveaway.com the grand prize is a new jeep wrangler unlimited sport 4x4 black armor edition built for the 2018 ultimate jeep dream giveaway by american custom jeep the black armor is uh, black armor jeep is powered by a 285 horsepower 3.6 liter v6 engine with a five-speed automatic transmission it's accessorized properly for serious off-road use and on-road comfort the Pro Comp 4.5-inch lift kit gives plenty of clearance for the 20 by 12 inch black moto metal wheels wrapped in 38 1550 Nito Trail Graffler tires. This Black Beauty sports a 52-inch light bar, LED headlights with halos, LED tail lights. Talk about wow factor. Other features include MagnaFlow exhaust, Stinger front bumper, Atlas rear bumper with tire carrier, Smittybilt XRC winch, Smittybilt 3-bar side steps. 10th Anniversary Rubicon Hood, Diamond Stitch Brown Leather Seats, Pioneer and JBL Audio. Man, this thing is hooked up. Needless to say, I want this Jeep. And so will you. The best part is that the 2018 Ultimate Jeep Dream Giveaway is sponsored by New Beginning Children's Homes and BCH, a 501c3 provider of family-style, long-term residential care with a mission to provide foster children a safe and faith-centered family atmosphere where they can heal, grow, and be loved while working through difficult life issues. In addition to the funding they receive, NBCH will provide grants to several worthwhile charities, including Honor Flight, National Guard Educational Foundation, Smile Network International, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, Bright Pink, and Detroit Rescue Mission Ministries. So once again, to get a chance to win one of two amazing Jeeps and $10,000 in cash, call 866-600-0646 or enter online at www.dreamgiveaway.com. All right, that's not exactly what they meant by shaker hood. 
For those unfamiliar with the term, shaker hood referred to some of the 70s era muscle cars whose intake air intake was mounted directly to the air cleaner and protruded through the hood and shook slightly as you rev the engine. The reason I bring this up is that you guys may remember a few weeks back as the official press release photos of the new Jeep Wrangler JL came out that Tony was complaining a little bit about the holes in the side of the fenders. Now, you don't have to look all that closely to see that the 2018 Wrangler has a lot of holes in it, especially if you take off the doors and fold down the windshield. <laughs> No, but in all seriousness, the ones in the front fenders aren't there just for looks, nor are they there to cool the engine or the brakes even. Instead, they help address one of the top complaints among Wrangler owners since the 1970s. It's called hood flutter, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Ah. At higher speeds, air coming through the grill and from below the vehicle builds up pressure under the hood in the engine compartment, and it causes it to flutter or bounce annoyingly, loudly, and sometimes viciously. Google it, and you'll find plenty of videos and some interesting hacks to fix the issue that range from cable ties to the Fast and the Furious-inspired hood spoilers. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now, there's an app for that, too. No, I'm just kidding. Seriously, though. Jeep thinks that they have fixed this once and for all, however. The fully functional, flutter-free, flowing fender vents allow more than that underhood air pressure to escape, which reduces the pressure practically eliminating the problem. Wait, they didn't completely eliminate the problem? Well, maybe Tony's complaints are justified, then. Despite the looks, it is a relatively simple solution that adds a new styling element that Tony doesn't like to the Wrangler's traditionally slab sides. Of course, if you like this and want even more holes in the front of your Jeep, you'll have to go to the top-of-the-line Rubicon model, which has a couple of very large hood vents in the top of its hood that are there for when you're hard at work on the rocks and need a little extra heat escape. The external hood latches also have an all-new design, which is supposed to hold the hood down more securely as if the engineers actually had off-roading in mind when the latches are half open, they double as a guide for your winch controller cable. So it's not dragging along the side of the vehicle, getting hung up on branches and stuff as you operate one from the driver's seat. Pretty cool, huh? All in all, it's looking more and more like Jeep really turned things around with the purpose-built engineering that went into the all-new Wranglers. Hey, and speaking of the new Jeeps, guys, I'm working on a story for next week about the new Jeep pickup that you're not going to want to miss. In the meantime, if you've got a news tip or have a response to any one of our stories, well, make sure to let us know. Send us an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com. So you were talking about um, Jeep giveaways, and I just yes, wanted to mention there, there's another Jeep giveaway. Um, they'll be announcing this raffle soon. It's going to be raffled off for the fifth annual Crawling for Cops, and you guys will be excited to know it's a 1997 Jeep Cherokee two-door. Oh, wow. And, yeah. yeah, we've uh, actually reported on the Crawling for Cops in Wheeling Wear uh, events in the past. Yes. And so that's really cool to hear that they're going to be giving away a Jeep and not only just any Jeep, it's a Cherokee nonetheless. Yeah. So really cool. Can't wait to get the details out to that, guys. Make sure you stay tuned to the Jeep Talk Show. And of course, make sure you check us out at jeeptalkshow.com where we have all the pertinent links to info that you hear right here at the show. The 1984 through 2001, uh, also known as the Affordable go anywhere jeep because <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> the wranglers are so damned expensive all right well you know uh getting back to the the styling that they've done on this new jl wrangler mm -hmm. i i gotta tell you especially since what we've seen in the past with the the renegade uh the the, the new cherokee some of these things that uh jeep has done to us notice i said done to us <laughs> yeah. uh <laughs> when they've released these uh, abominations I am very surprised, excited, and happy to see that the JL Wrangler at least appears to me to be a true, honest to goodness Jeep. Getting back to its the 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 roots of uh, a, a simple dash, uh, albeit with a display in the middle, which is not. I mean, it's simple, but it's it's very futuristic at the same time. Um, and uh, this this fluttering hood thing that they they've addressed. I had no idea that that's what that was. That the, the There's really been a bunch of like kind of subtle engineering that has made really big differences in not only the styling cues, but also the function of the new Jeep Wrangler. Some of the stuff that's gone into, you know, some of the design aspects, the way that they've grouped things, and, and of course, really the overall aesthetics of it, it really does look a lot more purpose-built. Like it's not just, we're going to pull some buttons off the shelf and slap it on the dash, here you go. No, this really, they, they went through a lot of R&D, I believe, as far as getting the engineering really set for off-roading. I'm thinking that the private eyes and stuff that were uh, hired by the, the, Jeep, the actual Jeep engineers on the, mm -hmm. uh, the FCA managers finally got some information that they could use against them 
so they would let them build the Jeep the way it needed to be built. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm right. thinking. That's they what I'm thinking. Dirt. They got some something holding over the head. They got some juicy <laughs> photos out there. Yeah, yeah conspiracy, yeah. Tony. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, but there's people out there that love conspiracies, uh, and you don't know it could be possible because it, it's a radical departure uh, based on what we've seen. I think we this were all true. concerned. I think we were all concerned no, you're, about the you're, new you're absolutely right because earlier on, the rumors that were coming out w- about this were like, well, it's going to be all aluminum. It's going to be <sighs> really weak. Oh, it's going to be independent front and rear suspension. It's not yes. going to be a Jeep anymore. It's going to be shaped like a Camry. It's going to, you know, there was, there's all this <laughs> stuff that out there that was just like, oh my God, they're going to kill the Jeep. Yeah. And thankfully, thank God, they have really done the design uh, justice. I, I think that they did. They really knocked this one out of the park. Oh, and your story about the uh, the Jeep truck. I'm looking forward to hearing about that. Yeah, uh, well, that's this gonna is be- going to be some really juicy info on this. There was some info. There was a, a couple of spy photos that were leaked this week, and so I'm digging into that, getting kind of underneath the skin a little bit, and getting behind the scenes to get some information about what these pictures mean exactly. And this is going to be some big, big news. So you guys want to stick, stay tuned. I tell you what, Jeep truck. It's pretty damn exciting to me. Uh, I mean. The the JL uh, actually got me thinking about buying a new Jeep. It ain't going to happen. Yeah, but right? It, but I know, it, me too. <laughs> it got me thinking about buying a new Jeep. I mean, uh, the JKs were nice. The JKUs were nice. But but this, I mean, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm gushing over this. The, this J, uh, the JL really is something impressive. I love that you could put the, the windshield down on it without yeah. having to break down the, the roll bar like you have to do on a TJ. And I, I assume you can do it on a JK. It probably is the same type of. Uh, uh, a nightmare mechanic type stuff you have to do to get it down on the JK as well. Oh, I should, I should, ro- as soon as these get delivered into my area, I should just roll into my dealership like a storm and just be like, all right, I'm setting up some video equipment over here and some yes. audio equipment over here. And we're just going to do a video really quick. And uh, don't mind me. I know what I'm doing. Get that slow <laughs> kid, get the slow kid down from down the block to hold up the uh, a box of tissues and paint it up yeah. to look like audio gear. Well, hey guys, coming up here and later in the show, you have undoubtedly heard about Wheelers for the Wounded. If you haven't, well, we have with us committee member Taylor Ann Westcott to tell us all about it. So stick around. And hey guys, next week, oh, we got a big show lined up for you next week. Crystal Kunkel from Michigan Jeep Girl is going to be with us as well. So you guys got to stay tuned. Oh, that would ought to be a, a fun and interesting interview. You guys don't miss it. Not that one. Dear God, not that one again. Oh, that thing is great, Josh. <sighs> I thought we buried that. <laughs> no, no. That's a crystal staple for the podcast. Tony doesn't delete anything. Uh, apparently not. <laughs> the winter holidays are always a special time of year. A time to look back and reflect on all the blessings we've been given. A time to be thankful for all of our wonderful families. We here at the Jeep Talk Show consider you, each and every one of you, our listeners, subscribers, and contributors to the Jeep Talk Show, part of our family. We feel blessed that you let us be a part of your lives. We are humbled by your reviews, your thoughts, your humor, and well wishes. We are honored that you chose to join in on the Jeep Talk Show fun and shenanigans while we bring you Jeep and off-road tech and a wee bit of humor here and there. For Josh, Tammy, and myself, and all of our contributors, have a very Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and a cheap tacular new year. Hey, you can help get the word out about the Jeep Talk Show. You're on Facebook, right? I bet you're a member of several Jeep pages, aren't you? All you have to do is post something about the Jeep Talk Show. Maybe ask permission first, <laughs> but post something up directing them to our website, www.jeeptalkshow.com, and tell them to install the Jeep Talk Show app on their phone. It doesn't get much simpler than that. All right, now we're going to get into the five-part series of airing up from Steve and Jeep Tips. No, I'm serious. I, last week, it was a airing up a segment. This is going to be part six of airing up, and uh, I'll just warn you, get your pencils ready. There's uh, more, more airing up segments to come. I tell you what, Jeep, uh, Jeep, might as well call him Jeep. Uh, Steve has a lot of good Jeep information. Hi, this is Steve 4.3 LXJ with another Jeep tip. I'd like to continue our series on airing down, and this time I'd like to talk about the sand and air compressor and making it work properly, and the components that you're going to need with it in order to make it work like a regular air compressor. And I hope that you've watched my video by now on YouTube, Onboard Air the right way, so that you can visually see these components and see this compressor in action. 
if you notice, I took a completely flat tire and aired it up to 32 PSI in just under a minute. And you'll also, if notice that the compressor uh, or the engine cycled down and, and stopped high revving right after I was done with airing up. So in reality, if this was a 35 inch tire, that compressor would have cycled off even though air was going into the tire as fast as possible from a system that was at 150 PSI. So I'd like to uh, talk a little more detail about these compressors because uh, they're available to most of us. As I said, if you want to sacrifice your air conditioning and in an open Jeep, I don't see that as a problem. Uh, and if you uh, want to do this, it's a fairly cheap way to get some serious air. So at 11 PSI uh, with the engine revved, uh, this is a, a really good system and you can run anything you want. So the, the thing about these compressors is that they have a crankcase, they have bearings and, and so forth in them. They have five little pistons that are mounted horizontally. And these pistons don't have oil rings in them like your engine does. Your engine that uh, propels your vehicle, it has oil rings that scrape oil off of your cylinder walls to keep them from... Uh, the oil from going out through the exhaust. And when it does, it's, it'll start smoking. And, and you've seen this kind of thing when engines wear out. It's because these oil rings are no longer functioning. Well, the rings on your compressor are only compression rings. They're only made to pump pressure. They're not made to conserve oil. And in fact, when you get these compressors new, the oil for the system is already in the crankcase. And when you crank it up and start uh, pumping refrigerant through your system, some of that oil starts bleeding past the rings in the compressor as the crankcase pressurizes and it begins to circulate oil throughout the system until you get to the point where there's really no oil left in the crankcase it's all dissolved in the refrigerant and it keeps the uh, compressor lubricated and they last for a long time this way so the the secret then to making these compressors last is to get oil into them and keep it there and some people have uh, dribbled a little oil into them while they're operating in the intake side uh, every time to fill up a tire and so forth. I've heard of vegetable oil, motor oil, and various other things. I've heard of uh, air tool oilers being used to uh, mist oil into them. But the best way is to keep oil in the crankcase. And since the compressor crankcase pressurizes over time, it forces oil out of the crankcase past the uh, compression rings of the pistons. So the secret and it's one of the things that I really want to leave you with here. If you're going to run one of these things, you have to vent the crankcase. And that's pretty easy to do on the Sandin type, on the older Jeeps and other Jeeps too. The Sandin type compressors have a, a little plug in the top. You just take it out and the, you can fill the crankcase with oil through that or you can leave it vented. Uh, I have a rather fancy system on mine. But the bottom line is you have to relieve the pressure. And that allows the oil to be pushed back into the crankcase when the cylinders become pressurized instead of forcing oil out of the crankcase, which become pressurized during the intake cycle of the uh, pistons. So if you have the, a type of compressor that does not have a fill plug or a, a place to vent, uh, what you need to do is to take that compressor apart and drill a hole in it and tap it for some pipe threads. And you can then vent the crankcase and that will allow you to use this compressor then as an air compressor, because now you can keep oil into it. We're going to talk more about these systems as we continue on. Again, I urge you to watch my video, air, uh, excuse me, Onboard Air the Right Way on YouTube, and we'll hopefully uh, allow you to set up a system fairly cheaply on your open air Jeeps. See you on the trail. I think you mentioned that video uh, on the last uh, episode, mm -hmm. and I did not yeah. go and grab it and stick it in the show notes. Can we make sure we get that in the show notes so that I can uh, yeah, put I'll that on there? Um, uh, for, yeah, no for problem. This Actually, I, I have a link to that on my desktop here, so I will grab that and throw it in the show notes. I mean, we want people to be able to see that, and uh, I apologize to all the fine folks out there that probably were looking for that on our site and, uh, and didn't see it, but we'll get it in there for tonight's show notes. So, you know, I was making fun of Steve having uh, umpteen parts uh, airing about airing up, but damn, that was some good information. <laughs> I had, uh, you know, I didn't think about that. You start opening up the, uh, the AC compressor to push air out. And of course there's going to be problems with keeping it lubricated. Uh, Cause yeah, it's a I got closed a buddy system. that was, I got a buddy that was doing the same system or the same, basically the same conversion on that. And he ran into the same exact problem and, mm -hmm. and came up with his own creative solution. And I, I might have to, uh, 
kind of chat with uh, with Steve back channel on this one and kind of compare notes on that because uh, uh, there if there are obviously more than one way to skin a cat, but oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, d- definitely good some good information there. So uh, that's great stuff. Now, Steve, how do you? Uh, and I understand, I understand this will make it go a little longer, but how do you have the uh, use the air conditioner compressor for both air and AC? You know, kind of like the. Uh, the multifunction. Uh, uh, well, he's got he's that got have. two. He's got two, and he outlines <laughs> oh, that he? in his video. Actually, yeah, oh. in that video that he talks about, and he actually shows you, and you can see it. He's got he's got these two compressors sitting side by side, uh, right next to each other. So it, it's all belt driven. He has AC, and he has an AC compressor oh, uh, set up for uh, nice. for onboard air. So yeah, no, he's spoiled, spoiled you, rotten. You need to get an, <laughs> you need the LS uh, engine in there, Steve. I can tell right now. <laughs> it probably happened too. Although I think his current project is he's uh, looking at putting that Chrysler eight and a quarter in, replace finally replacing that Dana thirty five. Finally before, replacing before that it explodes and kills Dana thirty five. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to a four by four radio network podcast. The Jeep Talk Show is a proud member of the four by four radio network. Just visit four by four or four x four radio network dot com and learn more about the four by four podcast, center steer podcast. And Trail Chasers podcast, also known as that deadbeat that needs to do more uh, podcasts. <gasps> <laughs> uh, we love you, Cody. Uh, you ought to see, if you're not following uh, Trail Chasers on uh, Instagram and stuff, uh, you get to see his uh, his little daughter, his gorgeous little daughter grown up, and uh, uh, his lovely wife holding her occasionally. So there's something there for everyone. Shut up and listen. <laughs> Shut up. So shut up. You don't shut Man, up. Shut up, Shane. Hey. <laughs> shut up and listen. It's time for Wrangler Talk. It's time for G Mama. Hey guys. So last week I took my Jeep in to get a much needed oil change. Um I luckily didn't have to drive up to Adam's Jeep anymore because I'm out of free oil changes. <laughs> so I found I found uh, the shop, Adrenaline Off-Road, which is right up the street from me, and Jeff and Mike are so awesome. I took my Jeep there to get the oil changed. No, I don't do my own oil changing. Now, these are the um, same guys that had that, that piece of crap, uh, Dana 30, that you did the video on, right? Yeah. The one that they, they, had, they had to replace because another shop had done such a worse job on it? Yes, correct. Well, it's, it's, it's yeah. amazing. It, it is just amazing when you can get a good shop that's close by that you can trust. So I'm, yes. I'm very happy for you. Yeah. So, you know, we had, they have, you know, the lifts just like a regular garage. And anyway, so the Jeep was up on the lift and um, uh, they were changing the oil. And so I'm inspecting underneath my Jeep because how often do you get a chance where you can be in the garage where your Jeep is lifted, where you can walk underneath it and look at it and, um, it's just kind of interesting to see where all the the dings and the bangs and the you know the rock scrapes are. And I was pointing out to Jeff. I said, "Geez, I'm really um, rubbing over some rocks here back in the rear by my shocks." And he's like, "Oh yeah, they make skid plates for that." And I'm like, "What? Huh?" <laughs> and he's like, "As a matter of fact, he just had happened to have some laying around the shop." And oh, wow. they're the EVO manufacturing um, JK rear lower um, control arm skid plates. And so he went digging around and he found them. And I'm like, well, how do they go on? And he's showing them to me. And he's like, you got to weld them on. And I'm like, oh, weld, so weld something to my Jeep. Um, I was a little skittish at first. And then, I th- and then he was showing me the advantage of doing it and he showed me the the bolts right now where the the shocks are attached to this bracket where the shocks and my control arms are attached to this bracket anyway i've been scraping my bolts and um they're starting to get bent up or you know smushed together um so i took the dive and I just, I said, let's go for it. And so it was really interesting because I got to be there while they did everything. And Mike, um, welded these on and he showed me everything that you need to do and you know, how the, you know, welding works and cause I've never seen that before. So it was really, really kind of a cool thing for me. And now my Jeep has these, they look like skis. Um, I did a blog post on it. 
uh, today, if you guys go head over to my my blog, www.jeepmama.com, you can see some pictures there. Um, but I'm excited to go out on the trails to see how well they hold up. Um, and apparently now they have um, skid plates for your control arms, too, in the front. Oh, yeah. that's so, They've had that for a number of years now. Yeah. yeah I, I, actually, I thought it was the front that they were doing. I would And Josh, help me on this. Isn't it the front that takes mm-hmm. the really the majority of the abuse uh, off-road on the control arm uh, mounts? Man, I really, it's low-hanging fruit, buddy. So it's 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 really, it's it's both sides. It kind of depends on, on the terrain and your wheel placement and stuff. But I, I'm going to say it's, it's either or. Uh, so, you know, so it's with really... Our Cherokees, with our Cherokees, we don't have uh, oh, the rear control arms. That's you know, this why. is this is for the yeah, this is this is for the the Wranglers and, and the WJs and the, you know, the Grand Cherokee guys and and you know anybody with a four link setup front and rear is gonna have this issue. Uh, you have those lower those lower uh, control arms that are you know mounted on the bottom of the axle and, and those mounts hang down several inches below the axle mm-hmm. tube. And although you might have, you know, the best intentions as far as wheel placement and the line that you want to take and everything, but as we all know when you're out on the trail, not everything ends up going quite as, as planned. Slippery. And so you can very, very easily find yourself sliding off of a rock. I was going to say, slippery yep. rocks even when they're not wet. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, uh, and, and very easily start start bashing up those ears that, that the control arm mounts in between. And things can get tweaked out pretty easily. These skids are going to help save those ears from getting fla- flared out really big and save the ends of those control arms from getting beat up and having to be replaced prematurely. Yeah. The, I know on the Cherokee, and I suspect on the JKs, uh, it's just really uh, stamped steel that's uh, welded to your your axle, and mm-hmm. uh, it's just like the, the the control arms that come factory. They're they're very flimsy. So uh, yeah, I've been wanting to do that on mine for a while now, but I don't have a welder. I've never welded, but uh, I'm planning on getting a welder and uh, putting stuff like that on mine. So these look pretty beefy, Tammy. What are you, what's your uh, what's your thoughts on them? Um, I'm like I'm really happy. Um, I was nervous because I don't know I. I don't know what it's a mental block, I guess, about welding something to my Jeep because you're like, gosh, I'm not going to be able to take it off. But I yeah. don't. well, you can still but get the well, shock off though, so right. it, oh yeah, it doesn't it yeah, doesn't exactly. keep you from having uh, no. You don't have to cut anything off before you can take that off. And no. uh, I love armor. Uh, other than the weight yes. that it adds to your vehicle, uh, uh, the armor to me is is wonderful. I'm sure you feel like getting out there and beating the hell out of it now. Yeah, no, I am. <laughs> I am really excited, and I think I'm past that. Um, attaching stuff permanently to my Jeep. I'm over that. Um, so I think I'll be looking to add more. And actually, I'm going to come in one Saturday at work and I'm going to have the guys um, show me how to weld. And maybe I can start doing that oh, on my own. Oh, good for you, yeah, Tammy. So. It's a lot of fun. I, I, what I would do, I would, for anybody that's in Tammy's situation or has access to to that type of, of information, knowledge, and, and, and assistance stuff, is... Spend 15, 20 minutes on YouTube looking around just the basics of welding. Familiarize yourself with some of the terminology and some of the hand motions, stuff like that. I mean, just really give yourself a 30,000 foot flyover of what it is. What that's going to do is that's going to set you up. That's going to prime the pump, as it were. So when a person who is experienced in welding starts teaching you about certain things, you kind of already have a little bit of information floating around in there and you're going to start picking st- stuff up a lot quicker than you ordinarily would. And it was funny because I was talking to the the, fl- the shop floor manager and he said, yeah, come in on some Saturday and we'll help you. And I'm like, you know, it really looks quite easy. I'm, you know, I think I'll catch on pretty quickly. And he just Not started laughing science. at me. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> I think the, the hardest part is adjusting the, the welder the proper voltage and yeah. and yeah. learning how fast you need to move the right. the thing a to get a good well. A lot of technique involved. Yeah. Yep. A lot of technique. Practice. Uh, practice. And uh, right. uh, it, it, it certainly, I think it, it really helps the curve if, if somebody that knows what they're doing uh, gives you the, the, the quick uh, go ahead or the, uh, the quick show me how to do it type thing. But, right. And some tips and tricks yeah. type of thing. Anyway, we jumped in there in the middle of your, uh, your segment. No, Did you no. get all of it? Yep, quite. No, that was that was it. Yeah, I'm Spur glad. Spur of the moment, shopping for Jeep Mama, right? Glad you did that, and uh, I uh, I would have jumped on that if they said, you know, yeah. I got a, a, some spare skid plates, you mean weld them <laughs> on there? Oh, that's what I was going to mention. I think drilling the first hole, the first big hole in your Jeep is much worse than having something welded onto the bottom of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Taking I, away, and you know, that hole is just off a little bit, and you're thinking, oh, holy crap, what do I do now? <laughs> Right, right. 
Hey, you- folks, there's a lot more Jeep Talk Show coming up, so don't hit pause yet. We're going to answer a listener question about cold air intakes and Tech Talk. And we're just moments away from our interview with Taylor Ann Westcott with Wheelers for the Warrior. Uh, cold air. Or for int- the wounded. Wheelers for the wounded. <laughs> uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oops. The, the cold, cold air intakes. Don't get me started. Hopefully, Josh will, uh, oh, no. will, will take care of all those little things that uh, just drive me up the wall about cold air intakes. You know, oh, we'll see when they're in the we engine compartment. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if you're looking for a source of Jeep tech info, how to's and a gathering of fellow like minded Jeepers, you guys got to head over to our forum, jeeptalkforum.com. Got a ton of stuff there for all kinds of Jeepers, guys. No matter what you drive as far as Jeep goes and no matter where you're at in your Jeep life, whether you're on your first Jeep or your seventh Jeep, we've got something for every Jeeper at jeeptalkforum.com. And hey, guys, right now we've got some reviews coming up. We love interaction with our listeners, guys, and we love it when you guys give us some comments, rate our show, and leave us some feedback. We've got a couple of great reviews this week from Facebook. First, we have Quinn Howlett gives us five stars. Love the show. Very informative and very funny. If you're a Jeeper, you need to listen to the Jeep Talk Show. Helps my day go by quicker at work when I'm not driving my Jeep. The addiction is real. LOL. So do two, two, yeah. Do do two reviews make a trend? I'm I'm gonna say it does. We have a yeah. second one here from our Facebook reviews. Love getting these reviews from Wes B. Gave us five stars, of course. He says, "Great show! I can't believe I just found this awesomeness." I went on to ask. <laughs> I went on to ask Wes. You know, we try really hard to get the word out about the show, but we we fail just so horribly. Uh, and, and I wanted to know how he found out about it. And he said. Uh, it was some Facebook post. So the Facebook stuff is working, for guys. <laughs> Where it's at. Got to get the word out. Help us spread the word, guys. We already got this one guy. He just just now found us after 300-some-odd oh. episodes. Yeah, so. It's yeah. actually, December is actually the seventh year because the, the, the show wow. started in December of t- 2010. So oh this month goodness. is, the, is the, the end wow. of the seventh year, the beginning of the eighth year of the Jeep Talk Show. You got tech questions? Ah, oh, what do I ever? We have answers. Oh, that's good. I can, I, it's Tech Talk with Jeep Talk. Yahoo! Breathing. You know, it's kind of important. And for your Jeep, too. Combine fuel, spark, and air, and you create power. Take away even one of these, and your Jeep's engine is about as useful as a boat anchor. Air is critical for combustion. You can't have a running combustion gin- engine without it. And trust me, Your Jeep loves breathing as much as you do, so why not help it breathe better? That's exactly what brought listener of the show, Al Deganji, to write in and ask for more info about aftermarket intakes for Jeep engines. He writes, Hello, Jeep Talk Show. What is your opinion of replacement fresh air intakes? I have a new 2017 JK Rubicon Recon Edition, and I'm looking at the Mopar fresh air system. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks. Love the show. Well, the Mopar 770-70052 cold air intake for the 3.6 liter V6 engine found in most 2012 through 2017 Jeep Wrangler JKUs is a bolt-on system that is designed by Jeep to allow cooler air outside, outside air in through a directional cone filter and funnel it directly into the intake manifold at a higher volume and speed than the original equipment. These kits claim they provide noticeable horsepower and torque gains under varying atmospheric conditions. They are carb approved, and in the case of most newer JK and JKU JKU owners like Al, it won't void your warranty if installed by the dealer because it is an official Mopar performance upgrade. All right, the cold air is, well, the colder air is, the more dense it is. That's pretty much just science right there, meaning there is more cold air in the same given space as there would be if it were warmer. Getting more cooler air into the engine is crucial for optimal engine performance. That being said, one of the most more common modifications just about to any vehicle out there is to swap out a restrictive factory air box and intake system for a fresh air or cold air intake. If you add a cold air intake to any Jeep, you will typically have better acceleration from idle, a straight gain, a slight gain in fuel economy, and a small but noticeable boost in horsepower. You can typically see, hope to see about 1 to 3 miles per gallon increase, optimally about a 5 to 10 horsepower increase, and single digit torque gains. The downside to most cold air intakes is that they are usually less protective against water, which you can, which can cause hydro locking and really seize up and 
break your engine if you find yourself doing frequent deep water crossings. Now, if you install a, install a cold air intake, be sure to stay away from deep, deep mud and water unless it's a snorkel kit, but that's a topic for another day. Okay, let's get into the anatomy of an aftermarket intake system. Cold air intakes typically consist of an open cone filter married to a smooth single piece of piping leading into the throttle body. The open cone filter is better than your flat stock paper air filter laying on the top of a box. It has more exposed surface area and are designed to allow more air into the engine. But its position and what it's surrounding, what's surrounding it is crucial to ensure the air remains as cool as possible and doesn't take in water or hot air from the engine compartment. Due to these two major points, most of these kits are still protected with some sort of an enclosure. These high flow filters provide more air to the engine than the restrictive factory air box in the factory paper filter. And the smooth single piece pipe is far more free flowing than that accordion tube you see on top of most engines. All cold air intake systems do the same thing. It's how they do it and how well they do it and how well they're made is where the product selection comes into play. In the case of the Jeeper who rode in, I'm just going to guess that the choice of the Mopar brand take in intake versus an aftermarket brand was to ensure that he keeps the factory warranty. One driveway mod that's not Mopar approved and that warranty is null and void. In all honesty, the kit that Al is looking at for his 2017 JKU is a decent kit. It has all the components you would expect from similar aftermarket systems, including the filter, hose, all the gaskets and mounting brackets, etc., as well as the enclosure that helps keep water, rain, and hot engine bay air out and make sure that nothing but cooler outside air gets in. It's not super fancy, but it doesn't have to be. Sure, for the average price tag of three dollars to $400 for this Mopar kit, he could certainly get more bang for his buck going elsewhere. But is one mile per gallon and a few extra ponies of horsepower worth the loss of the warranty? Yeah, not in my book. On average, aftermarket systems that are worth the money will start around the $200, $250 range and can cost as much as five or 600 bucks with a snorkel and all the bells and whistles. Some of the brands to give serious consideration to would be AFE, Air Raid, Banks, Flowmaster, and of course the brand that started it all, K&N. There are, of course, more out there, and I encourage you to do some research and read some reviews. Brands I would stay away from are Volant, S&B, Corsa, and especially Spectre. I have my reasons for each, but in the interest of not bashing companies on the air, let's just say you're going to have to take my word for it. Al, I hope this helps set your mind at ease. The Mopar cold air intake is a great, well-performing option for those who want a little extra performance, style, and customization to their Jeep without sacrificing the warranty. Yes, there are other options out there for anyone not in Al's position. I'm always down for the DIY route. There's tons of places to source components for custom intake systems. That's exactly how I designed and sourced all the supplies for my cowl intake on my Jeep. And this kind of upgrade is typically a very easy install that requires very little as far as tools and can be done in a short period of time in your own driveway. From aftermarket turnkey systems with tried and proven technology, flow bench tested results and more to custom one-of-a-kind self-designed systems, Adding a cold air intake is the easiest way to charge some new life into that Jeep motor and gain some real seat-of-the-pants performance. And hey, Al, give us a call after you get that intake installed and let us know what you think of it. In the meantime, if you guys have a question about Jeep tech, mods, electrical, or anything Jeep-related for that matter, maybe you just need some advice on a build, shoot me an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com with a subject line tech talk. I'll answer your question directly. I may even select it to answer here, air on the show. Well, <clears throat> uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize that the, the snorkel, uh, is, uh, not really, was not really, uh, intended for water crossings. It was intended to get above the dust in Australia because you're driving really? along at a, in a convoy. There's a lot of dust that uh, gets stirred up and it's, huh. it's very relatively, uh, you know, I guess it's denser, closer to the ground. And if you get a snorkel up around six feet or whatever the height that your vehicle is, now you're getting it uh, above the ground, and, and that air is also a little cooler uh, being above the ground uh, by six or feet or so. So uh, when you see a snorkel, you think high water crossing, but it's it really its original intent was uh, to have uh, less dust and, and more air going into the engine. And for my my book, I think that that's more of a cold air intake than anything that stays inside the hot engine bay. So like what Josh did with his, with the, uh, the, the intake being through the, uh, uh, what is it called? The cow cow intake, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that that's a, a good, um, second option. I, I think that the snorkel is, is the best option, but it's the less obtrusive and you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, snorkel haters out there too. You put a snorkel on your vehicle. Oh, hey, you know, there's 27 things you got to fix uh, before you can do high water crossings. Uh, you can't just put a <laughs> snorkel on there. What about your transmission? Do you think about that? 
So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, so anyway, little, uh, little tip there. Snorkels weren't uh, originally invented for, uh, high water crossings, at least not the ones for the Jeeps. I think the military had, uh, had them in mm. uh, high water and crossings in mind back in World War II. This is Zach from CNM Jeeps. This is Lisa Simon from Chim Perfect. This is Alan Peterson with Painless Performance Wiring. This is Amy from TNA Decal. This is Neil from SFJ4x4.com. This is Randall Spear, Motorsports Manager from Dana Aftermarket. This is Paul Wolf from ENI USA RM. Hey, I'm John Eastmore from Black Forest. This is Nathan Leahy from Mickey Thompson Tires and Wheels. And, and you're listening, listening to, to the Jeep, Jeep Talk Show. Yeah, a nice big Jeep wave goes out to all of our friends and fans in the off road industry. We thank you for your support. I'm Ryan from ExtremeTerrain.com, and today I want to tell you about the new line of Deegan 38 products we've just added to the site. Brian Deegan is a 14-time X Games freestyle motocross medalist and the only rider to compete in every X Games since its inception. He's currently tearing it up in the off-road racing scene and is a huge fan of Jeeps, so we've worked with Brian to introduce a new line of armor to the site, and that is the Deegan 38 line. All of these parts are built with function in mind first, but also bring a lot to the table on the form side of things. There is a front and rear bumper with a tire carrier, fender flares, rock sliders, skid plates, Plates and even a grill all under that Deegan 38 banner. Almost every part offered includes high quality KC lights built right into the design for even more function when the sun goes down. And all of these parts are designed to work really well together and look great together if you're looking to fully outfit your JK or of course they'll work independently if you just want to choose one or two parts. You can see all of the new parts in a video we made documenting the Jeep we've recently built and delivered to Brian out in California. We were really excited to build the Jeep for him and as you can see in the video, he was even more excited to receive it. So check out the Deegan 38 brand page at extremeterrain.com slash Deegan 38 Jeep Wrangler parts dot HTML or find a link to the parts as well as the video on the Jeep talk show site. It was the night before Christmas when all through the web, not a Cherokee was staring, not even on The Walking Dead. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Muddenrock would soon be there. The jeepers were all nestled, all snug in their beds, while visions of live kits danced in their heads. Your mother and her moo moo and I and my thong were just settling in to do something very wrong. When out on the lawn there arose such a kapak, I sprang from the bed to see what the f- Yes, quite. Off to the window I dodged your mama's grope. Picked up the rifle, you know, the one with the big thermal scope. The LED light bar had lit up the new fallen snow, gave the look of midday to the objects below. Looking upward from the beadlocks on what do my eyes lay? But a fat dude in red velour climbing out of a sweet XJ. He was armored in red and had axles that did lock. Sitting on 35 inch crawlers, I knew it was St. Mud and Rock. More rapid than a Nicky G rant, his hails they came. And he yelled, and he shouted, and he called him by name. Now locker, now tree strap, now fender and shackle. On ARB, on rough country, worn and something that rhymes with shackle. To the top of the trail, through even the deepest of snow. Now download, now download the latest Jeep Talk show. Like a bound up driveline, you joints will fly. When they meet with an obstacle, wheel stands will fly. Now off to see other good jeepers is what he must do. With a jeep full of goodies and St. Mudden Rock, too. Merry Christmas, Jeepers, from yours truly, Richard Cranium Allswell III. Hey, this is Tony. And I'm Tammy. And this is Josh. And you've reached our 24 7 voicemail line. You guys know what to do, so at the beep, leave your message. Yoo-hoo. Oh man, I would like to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. I uh, hope you've all been very <laughs> naughty boys. Toodaloo. <laughs> and a Merry Christmas to you, Josh. Oh, there's another blast from the past. <laughs> Boy, for you uh, veteran listeners out there, uh, that's uh, that's Josh's subconscious. <laughs> apparently uh my my subconscious likes to call into the show on occasion and <laughs> Un- and uh unbeknownst well, to conscious josh <laughs> unbeknownst yeah completely <laughs> completely unbeknownst <laughs> the conscious josh yes <laughs> <laughs> love that stuff from around the world
or from your city. And sometimes just down the street. Howdy, neighbor. It's the Jeep Talk Show interview. So everyone, I'm really excited to announce our our interview for tonight. We have Taylor Ann Westcott, and she's going to be sharing with us all about Wheelers for the Wounded. Hey, Taylor, welcome to the Jeep Talk Show. Thank you very much. Um, first off, um, can you just give us a little bit of personal information, like who you are? Are you a Jeeper? Do you have a Jeep? And then do you want to just share with us a little bit about um, your group? Uh, so I do have a Jeep. I have a 97 TJ Wrangler that is bright purple. Yay! Uh, been, <laughs> it's been in my family since day one. Uh, I've been working on it since I was about 14 years old. Wow. Um, part Yeah, I'm part of multiple organizations. Uh, this is just the one that I'm very neck deep, you know, drowning in that I absolutely enjoy it every minute. And that's the Wheelers for the Wounded. How did you get involved with that group? Uh, So I got into the Jeep world about four years ago. I didn't realize there were these things called Jeep groups. And then I found out and I've, you know, you you meet people and you come across different things. And so I came across this organization called Wheelers for the Wounded. They were holding an event out in Marble Falls, uh, the Hidden Falls Off-Road Ranch. And it was a fundraiser that they do every September where we have places will donate things for auction, like Jeep parts, tires. I mean, you name it, they'll donate it for auction. What we'll do is we'll get raffle tickets and all the proceeds go straight to Wheelers for the Wounded. So that way we can pay for the big trip that we do every year. And the big trip that we do is every May, about the first weekend, uh, we have, we invite people from Fort Hood, everywhere, all these wounded veterans and their families out for an all-expenses-paid off-road trip. Oh, wow. Uh, Yeah, it's to no cost to them. So, when, how long has this group been around? How long have they been doing this? I've been doing this for four years now, but I believe they've been doing it for about 10. And so, how many um, wounded warriors and their families usually get to go um it's honestly it's growing every year uh i mean we had over a hundred rigs come down and we had leftover you know we had leftover rigs to where you know they didn't get families which is a good thing you know we want to make sure every family's taken care of but i mean it's always a 100 200 plus people every year and so these um families they like ride along on an off-road trip, like through the trails and are they difficult trails? Uh, Some of them are difficult. So we do a mild and a wild group. So that way, you know, it's up to them with what they want to do. If you know they're comfortable, they want to do something really simple. They'll go with the mild group. But if they want, you know, to, you know, see the, the different kinds of Jeeps and the things we can do just a little more complex things, they'll take the wild trails. And this is a whole weekend of, um, trail riding? It's just one day. Um, so it starts Saturday morning. Uh, everybody comes down for a driver's meeting. We do our driver's meeting in the morning. Uh, we wait for the buses to come that are, they're escorted in. They're big charter buses. We make sure that, you know, they have a comfortable trip down. Uh, once they get there, we, we escort them in. We have, uh, we have lines of people that just applaud as they walk into the event. Uh, We feed them breakfast, and then we do a flag ceremony. And once we do the flag ceremony, we explain to them how the day is going to go, and then we help load them all up in these vehicles. And then we'll be out for about four or five hours. And then once we're done, we'll come back. We'll feed them lunch. Uh, We'll have them swap stories. Home Depot comes out so they can do the kids' workshop. Um, And everything is everything's donated time. What's the kids' workshop? So Home Depot will bring, like, they'll bring stuff for, like, the kids to make birdhouses or little wooden race cars, things of that nature. So, Mm -hmm. you know, if the kids are too crazy to, you know, after all the excitement of the trails to sit down and sit still and eat, they can go and do some arts and crafts. Right, right. Hey, Taylor, this is uh, this is Tony. I had a, a qu- quick critical question. You mentioned uh, feeding them breakfast. Is bacon part of that breakfast? Mm-hmm. 
Bacon is part of the breakfast. Yes. It's in some of the burritos that we offer. But yes, bacon <laughs> is very important. <laughs> you know, I can't think of a greater Christmas story than uh, than this. I, you know, we just scheduled this as as we had uh, both had time to do the interview. And I think it's wonderful that right here before Christmas, we're talking about this. Uh, it's it's just great to hear. Now, um, just, just so everybody understands, uh, you're based out of Texas. This whole deal is based in Texas, and uh, you guys go to Hidden Falls, the uh, Texas uh, well-known Texas park, off-road park. Um, does this mean that the warriors, that uh, the wounded warriors that are part of this, uh, does that mean that they have to be from Texas, or can they be from all over? Um, they can be from all over. You know, we reach out through different organizations, uh, but we mainly go through Fort Hood. Uh, and there's some smaller organizations that pass out our information so that way they can get in contact with us so they can go on this trip. Oh, that's wonderful. And I think you and Tammy already covered it, but all expenses are paid. Uh, so you guys take care of everything, including the food, uh, obviously the entertainment for the children uh, with Home Depot. It, it just sounds like a, a, a big, long, uh, stress-free uh, day of wheeling. It's, and that's what it's all about. The people who, you know, come to le- to bring their rigs out, we actually pay to be part of this event. We have to pay and register to, you know, take these vets out on these trails. So, I wow. mean, it, that's what helps us pay for it. And, you know, it makes sure, you know, we have people that really want to be there. Now, do the, uh, the, the individuals, the guests, are, do they get to drive the vehicles or are they only passengers? Uh, there are some there are some cases that we will let them drive them. It typically happens on some of the milder trails, but we do have a couple that you know will be like, hey, you know, come on, get in the driver's seat. We're going to teach you some things, and it actually you know has caused people to come back. We have vets that come back with their own jeeps to participate in the event to take other veterans on the trails. So I was just going to ask you that: Have you had any converts that people maybe they were driving a Prius before? Although I don't mm-hmm. think any soldier would drive a Prius. <laughs> 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 they were driving a Prius or a Toyota before, a Toyota car, and then they, they decided to get a Jeep and come and be out there uh, as a, a new hobby for them. Yeah, we have. We've had quite a few, actually, that will come back with their own rig, whether it be a Jeep or, you know, something that they've torn apart and, you know, put together. They'll come back to hang out with us and be part of the event. Would, uh, would I be incorrect in, in calling this Jeep therapy? Um, no, no, I don't think so. This is, uh, it's different. You know, there's just smiles constantly and we get to listen to their stories and their lives and, you know, it takes the stress off of them. It does, you know, they get to enjoy their families and they don't have to worry about anything. That's wonderful. Now, how do, how do, do they get picked to do this, the the warriors, the soldiers? Or do they just sign up, or is there a process they need to go through to be able to be a part of this? Uh, they just sign up for it. Like I said, we go through different organizations who get the word out. And Fort Hood, uh, we we go through them to, uh, for a lot of it. Uh, but like I said, you can go through our website and through Facebook and you can get a hold of our board of directors in order to get more information so you can be a part of it. So I am I take it like this bus would leave from Fort Hood. Um, do the families, like let's say somebody from Maryland wanted to do this, would they have to get themselves to the central bus location that takes them to um, your event? Is that how that would work? Yes, they could either, you know, get to where the buses will be leaving or, you know, if they come in and they want to rent a car or something, they can drive to the park themselves. Right. Uh, It sounds like an exciting event. Um, Do they have children of all ages with these families? Oh, yeah. We have kids of all ages that come. And, you know, for little kids, it's the coolest thing in the world. (laughs) Oh, yeah. You know, they get to... They get to go back to school and, you know, during after summer, you know, go be like, like, guess what I did? Guess what I did? You know, we could have gone over the smallest rock in the world and it's the coolest thing to them. And just to see, you know, their parents happy to see them happy and enjoy the family time. I and mean, that's what it's about. I would imagine you see some adult tears of happiness out there. Yeah, we do. Actually, I got to this year. I had a family that rode with me and this was their sixth year coming to this event. Oh, wow. Well, that was giving me my next question. If there was a limit to the number of times that uh, 
uh, our soldiers could come out there and be a part of this event? No, I mean, we don't ever want to exclude anyone because like I said, this takes the stress off their families. Not all the time they can afford to go on a vacation or go on a trip and we want to be able to take that stress off and let them have a day with their family. So is, uh, can you, can anybody volunteer, uh, for this? I'm sure anybody can donate money, but, uh, do you need volunteers? Do, how, how do, how would somebody go about volunteering and what kind of uh, jobs would they, do you have available? So anybody can volunteer. I actually volunteered my niece this year, I actually kind of volunteered. <laughs> her. She was more than welcome to come. Uh, and so what happens is if, you know, if you're, you're not going to drive and you just want to volunteer, you'll either get in touch with me, any of our board of directors. And it'll be, you know, whether it's helping sell T-shirts or helping, you know, give directions, loading people up in the rig, passing out breakfast, passing out lunch, folding up chairs. There's so many different things that need to be done in the morning to get ready, but also to close the event as well. So if anybody wants to come and help and not necessarily drive, we're not going to tell them no. Excellent. Everybody can be a part of this. And it sounds like a wonderful thing to be a part of. It's truly rewarding. It's, it's different. It's life changing. Have you had any uh, issues with uh, perhaps the, uh, the off-road uh, stress being too much uh, for our, our wounded soldiers where they had to, uh, you know, ratchet it down a, a bit, a, a little bit? I've never had any issues over the few years that I've been doing this. And when we do this event, we make it known, you know, Hey, if your person that you're driving with, you know, if you're not comfortable or they're not comfortable, let's, you know, turn around, let's get them back to the pavilion. Let's get them, you know, lunch, you know, whatever we need to do, make them comfortable because this event is about them. You know, we, we let them know, you know, Hey, we don't know what the, these people have seen or where they've been deployed. So we need to be mindful and be aware of what's going on. Absolutely. Yeah. I could only imagine, especially somebody that has been wounded by a IED, uh, that was, you know, more than likely in a, a Humvee when it occurred. And I could see it, the same series of events at least being played back in their mind at, when they're going off road. I, I, I mean, perhaps this doesn't happen, but it's, it's something that I thought of. And I thought it was very interesting that this is a, uh, a, 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 a something that people that the, the soldiers look forward to going and doing. Uh, I'm, it, I just can't imagine. I've never been in war. Uh, I just can't imagine what, what kind of shape I'd be in afterwards. So, uh, it's just all uh, thought experiments for me. Yeah, I'm um, on. Sorry, Tony, go ahead. It's okay. It's just, it's different, you know, when when family's involved and, you know, a lot of these people, you know, either they've been settled for quite some time or they've been back for a few months. And I think when it takes the stress off their families, I think that's what makes it easier for them. Now, it says wheelers for the wounded. How do you determine uh, what soldiers are eligible, or do you not have an eligibility other than they just needed to be uh, soldiers uh, that served in a war zone? We, uh, we don't have any kind of eligibility. I mean, if you're enlisted, if, it does not matter. We want to we help everyone. We're not going to tell people no. So wounds don't have to be physical wounds. You don't need to be missing a limb or anything that maybe be, uh, may be uh, uh, obvious, an obvious wound. No. Okay, great. No, I, like I mean, that. We, we're here to help everyone, not just, ju- not just our physically wounded. Excellent. I was just um, on the website reading um, the story of, from past president, I believe, Jerry Sargent. Um, it's yes. a very touching story. I suggest everyone head over to, um, it's on their blog, um, wftwtx.com slash blog. Um, it's, it's a really touching story. And don't, I and don't worry, folks. We'll have that in the show notes. Yeah. Um, it actually, I'm tearing up right now. Um, it sounds like a really awesome event, and it helps so many people in so many different ways. Taylor, we have a problem with Tammy here on the show. She's either, go, you know, in a chat room when we used to do the live show or shopping. So I hope you guys don't have anything you can buy on your site. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's up to her with what she wants to spend her money on. But we, <laughs> right. we do appreciate donations. And the, like I said, anything that we do sell, all, all proceeds go straight to these families. Ah, there you go, Tammy. See, that's, yeah, that's good just, shopping. 
I clicked on the little donate button, so I'll have to check everything out. As I, as I hope everyone listening will will do as well. What's that website again, Tammy? Do you still have it up? Oh no, I just clicked on Soldiers Angels. Um, a W F T W T X dot com. Excellent. Well, like I said, we'll be sure and have that in the show notes. Um, let's see. I was trying to think of some other things. Uh, I think we've pretty much gone over the entire event. Oh, I remember what I was going to ask. Uh, about how much seat time uh, do your guests get uh, off road? Is it uh, do you have to cycle them in and out because of the number of people that you have, or is it uh, an hour, two hours? Is it all day? How how many uh, how long do do they actually get seat time? I mean, we don't we don't do any kind of cycling in and out and have families waiting. Like I, uh, we try to make sure that we have more rigs than we actually need. Uh, you know, rather be safe than sorry. Oh yeah. And they're out for a few hours. I mean, we'll be out for three, four hours. Uh, it just kind of depends on when the buses get there, and you know, we go from there. Oh, well, that's great. That's that's a lot. That's <laughs> you'd be wore out by the end of the day. At least I would be uh, from uh, from the stress. Uh, so I would assume that you guys have some sort of contraption in there that allows uh, uh, the the wounded, uh, the ones that really were wounded, uh, physically wounded, to hold on. So whenever they're they're off road, they can actually. Uh, keep themselves uh, <laughs> in the Jeep. Yes. A lot of our wheelers that are coming in, if we have any, if we have any people that need special, you know, special care, we make sure we get them with a experienced uh, trail, uh, trail driver. And we make sure that they have everything they need to be comfortable on that trip. Definitely. So I'm going to go back to this purple jeep that you have <laughs> i'm curious um about your jeep like you know do, is it lifted you know do you have other accents on it you know when your tires that kind of thing um she's not much right now she's bleeding transmission fluid out like she got murdered it's all over Uh-oh. the the road right now but you know that's how Yikes. i know i at least have fluid it's leaking right uh but she's I just did, had to replace the motor a few years ago. I blew it at 286,000 miles. I replaced it with my dad. Um, next time I'll pay somebody to do it. Uh, <laughs> quite, yeah. uh, quite an experience. <laughs> it's a lot of work. But it, it's just, you know, three inch lift, 35 inch tires, nothing special. Uh, right. But she will be going undergoing surgery this coming year. Uh, we'll be doing a one ton swap. And uh, it makes me nervous saying that, but I'm really excited about it. Oh, uh, it'll be it'll be okay. So I don't know if you said what year uh, uh, Wrangler is it? It's a it's a '97. Oh, ah, okay. Hey Taylor, Josh here. Uh, just a quick question for you. Say uh, you know nothing special, but uh, is this not the purple Jeep that started the whole hashtag purple people eater craze? <laughs> uh, maybe I'm not sure. <laughs> Um, no, mine, unless you've seen me around town, but I mean, it is named the purple people eater. Oh, Some that's interesting. Around the Conroe, Montgomery County area. Uh, but yeah, that one's mine. You should name it the purple money eater. Yeah. Yeah. The money pit. <laughs> she's the money pit. <laughs> oh, they, they, they always are. So I saw, I saw, um, uh, a Twitter, uh, post one time with the, with this hashtag purple people eater with this, this girl up in a purple Jeep. Uh, driving over cars. Was that you? Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> okay. So you got to tell everybody, you've got to tell everybody the story, what it's like to drive your Jeep over cars. Cause everybody who's ever sat in their Jeep in traffic, I'm sure has had the fantasy of, I'm just going to floor it. I'm going to drive right over this guy. Uh, it was, it was really different. It was exciting. I actually, uh, I sat there and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I was like, I don't care how crazy it is. They handed me a waiver to sign and I just signed it. They said, you're not going to read it. And I just said, this basically <laughs> says you're all aren't responsible if I you know, break something. And, uh, it was, yeah, it was a good time. That was a couple of years ago. Uh, she's actually, she looks a lot different from, from that time. <laughs> yeah. Did you yeah, do- that was that was an amazing picture, and I so I had to ask you about that because that's not exactly something that uh, everybody gets to do you know, even once in their life, let alone with their own Jeep. Oh, and it's dangerous too because uh, you get off camper really quick uh, on those cars. You don't know how they're going to collapse. Yeah, you have to be very careful. I mean, we had uh, my friend Teresa; she was there spotting me to make sure I came up, came off right, make sure you know nothing happened. 
because, you know, your site is limited. Very much so. I do want to make a little statement here. The real purple people eaters are from the late 1960s, and that was the yeah. Minnesota Vikings defensive line. Just, just saying. <laughs> basketball? They, <laughs> basketball has a defensive line, Tammy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Taylor, it's been great getting information. Was there anything that we, we didn't ask? I mean, I, I think I did a pretty good job uh, covering uh, uh, all the stuff that uh, these uh, the, the wounded warriors would uh, would need to know and maybe some of their concerns about before they could sign up for this. Is, uh, is there anything that maybe we've left out? No, you guys haven't left out anything at all. Uh, if anybody has any questions, you guys have my contact information to spread around and hand out. And if they have questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Excellent. And, and to that point, uh, let's, let's go over the stuff again, or at least uh, uh, add to the stuff. How can uh, people uh, find out more about the uh, Wheelers for the Wounded, uh, you know, the social media, all the things the kids use these days? So you can go to the website, which we had talked about earlier. Um, you can also get on Facebook and look up Wheelers for the Wounded Texas. Uh, you can follow the page. You have options to send messages so that way the administrator can, you know, get in contact with you. Or uh, you can email me at taylorwestcott1992 at gmail.com. Ask, send me an email, ask me any questions, and I can get you in contact with the right people if it's something that I don't necessarily handle. Excellent. Yeah, it's not so important knowing all the answers, but where to get them and getting people to the right ones. Well, I, I just can't tell you uh, how much this, uh, how great it's been to have you on here and, let, and hear you talking about this uh, wonderful uh, selfless thing that you guys do. Uh, oh, uh, how often do you guys uh, do this event? Is it once a year or more more than once a year? And, and what time of year is it? Uh, so it's once a year, and it's typically the first weekend of May. Everybody typically drives up Friday, so that way they can, you know, get settled in. There are campsites, things that they, you know, places they can sleep, and it takes place that Saturday morning. Excellent. And, uh, you know, we do a Wheeling Wear segment uh, every week here on the show, and we would love to know about this, you know, maybe in June. Uh, so please put us on your list as far as let, let us know exactly when it's going to be so we can uh, tell everybody about it. Uh, maybe maybe a little earlier than that, though, uh, so we can uh, uh, people that would like to go uh, and be uh, the guests there would have a chance to uh, to sign up. Well, I can definitely get in contact with you guys before and after the event and give you guys, you know, updates and more information and anything you guys want. I can make sure you have it. That'd be great. We'd really appreciate that. Thank well, you very much. Well, Taylor, thank you so much for being with us tonight. I hope you have a, a very Merry Christmas. So sorry to hear about your transmission, but hey, it's a Jeep. And uh, <laughs> if you weren't using it or if you had something else, you wouldn't have that problem. But then again, you wouldn't have a Jeep. Honestly, don't be sorry. At least I know it has fluid and it still starts. So, I mean, that's really <laughs> right. important. The yeah, registration important. might be expired, but it still starts. <laughs> <laughs> Registration's optional in Texas, folks. Right. That's what I say. <laughs> Have a great night. Thanks, Taylor. Y'all too. Well, that was a lot of fun. Got to thank Taylor and Westcott again for taking the time to talk about Wheelers for the Wounded and, of course, uh, the uh, the big purple people eater. That that <laughs> thing is a monster. Can't wait to get for her to get that thing back on the road and back on the trail again. Sounds like there might be a future where uh, where you and her maybe get a chance to get some off road action together. Tony, I hope so. That'd be, uh, that'd be great to uh, to get uh, you know an interviewee, a fan of the show, and whatnot out on the trails with you. That that'd be some that'd be some good times. Well, I don't want to call her a fan of the show. She's certainly been a guest uh, interview on the show, and uh, hopefully no, she becomes I'm a fan. I'm calling it like I see it. I just. <laughs> <laughs> Whether she wants to be or not, that's how it you is. You know, if you can't have wishful <laughs> wishful thinking during Christmas, what can you have? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was great talking uh, to Taylor and uh, such a wonderful thing they're do, they're do, that they are doing. It's just, um, you know, it, it's it's so easy whenever you're sitting at home and uh, you're thinking about working on your Jeep and, ah, I got to get that beast uh, fixed so I can take it off on the trail. But can you imagine? I got to get that thing fixed so the other people that have uh, fought for this country uh, that, uh, you know, need a little helping hand, a little enjoyment for the day, uh, is going to make, uh, make a difference in their lives. I mean, that's make huge. All the difference in the world. Are you kidding me? No, I've, I've talked with some of the guys who have, who have participated in this. Now, th logistically, there is a ton of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. And, and so if you're wondering why you haven't heard about these, ha heard about this or, or seen any of these events going on in your town, 
it's because there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to just to make it happen, let alone to, to carry it out. And, and so even though, you know, Wheeling is, is really, really large out here in the Northwest and we have a bunch of uh, places to, to do this sort of stuff at, um, these types of events really haven't really come out to the Northwest, uh, at least all that often certainly because of the logistics behind it. Um, and so having Taylor and some contact information, maybe see if I can't get a hold of some of the other board members and see if we can't get something rolling out here in the Northwest. Yeah. Maybe it just takes the, the right nudge in the right direction. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Start, you know, get the, get the squeaky wheel going, you know, put a bee in the bonnet as it were. And, and, uh, maybe here in another year or two and get something, get something going. From the mind of Nikki G. Ah, this is a uh, Ricky G, Nikki G's uh-huh. dim-witted cousin. Uh huh. I'd like to wish everybody listening to the Chief Talk Show a very happy holiday. Unless, of course, you're an atheist, then I guess it's a uh, happy. Feel like you're being left out day. Ah, all right, boys and girls. I'll chat at you later. Bye. I always say an atheist is one terminal illness away from their belief in God. <laughs> <laughs> See, I thought it was going to go happy Halloween there. I think it went to the happy holidays there. So, yeah, I thought, yeah. thought it was going to be happy Halloween for a second. And, and damn it, Nikki G, it's not happy holidays. It's Merry Christmas. You, you want to throw the rest of them in there? Josh, what's the rest of them? Uh, uh, Quanzimus? Uh, uh, what? No. <laughs> you always uh, say it. Uh, you, fe- Festivus. Festivus. There's Festivus, Festivus Kwanzaa, uh, Hanukkah. Hanukkah. But there's a one that you do every year. You you mix them all together, and I never can do it. Oh god, I think it's different every year. So. Oh okay. <laughs> I just you know because you do the Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, uh, Han Han Hanukkah Kwanzimus or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just rattle it off. I figured that was something that I was know, ingrained that, in your personality. That would have to take me <laughs> weeks to figure that out. <laughs> All righty. Well, anyway, you guys uh, have a, a great time of year, uh, and hopefully everybody is being nice to everybody. Uh, letting that person, uh, you know, they signal to, to get in front of you, let them in. Just, you know, be nice. Just, be for, nice. just for a week, and then go back to normal. <laughs> All righty. You must have needed this every day. It's the Jeep Talk Show's must-have stuff, pick of the week for your Jeep. You know, we must have had open mic when Tammy was shopping online for the, to get that I need it uh, <laughs> thing. Uh. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> I want that now. Well, guys, it is definitely uh, pretty much the dead of winter. Now, we maybe haven't entered the coldest months uh, of the season yet, but we're certainly in the throes of it. And, and I know out here, things have definitely gotten cold and windy. Now, when you're out on the trails and whatnot, there might be times where... Uh, you know, Bob up front, he can't quite get his Jeep over that rock. And so you got to sit there for a few minutes and maybe you're tired of sitting in the Jeep because you've been on the trail for the last 45 minutes straight doing two miles an hour. And so you hop out of the Jeep. Maybe you're talking to the guy in front of you. Maybe you're airing down a little bit more. Maybe you're giving your vehicle an inspection and it's time for the caravan to get moving again. So you hop back in your Jeep and lo and behold, you can't feel your steering wheel because your hands are frozen. And well, we got just the thing for that. This is the Zippo six hour rechargeable hand warmer. Look, guys, those little hand warmer things that you crunch up, you open up, and the oxygen helps them warm up and stuff like that, those things are all fine and dandy, but uh, really they're not great for the environment, and, uh, well, they don't last all that long, and they're certainly not all that hot. This, well, it comes in with a built-in rechargeable 5200 milliamp lithium-ion battery for lasting, reliable warmth up to a six-hour runtime. Dual-sided heat up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius. Operating temperature with five different heat settings for adjustable and comfortable warmth. It's about the size of a fat computer mouse or a bloated cell phone. Perfect (laughs) perfect for all sizes of hands, really. Has both battery and heat indicator lights to instantly see the status. It has a built-in USB charging port as well to power your cell phones, MP3 players, or that, you know, margarita mixer you bought off of, uh, you know, Sharper Image, whatever. So, uh, you know, this thing is made by a brand that's been around for 100 years, Zippo. You guys know their lighters. This is a non-flammable. There's no flame built in. This is a rechargeable hand warmer, and these things rock. So if you want to keep your hands warm out on the trail, you're looking for something to really instantly, you know, get some heat back in those finnies without wearing those big old gloves while you're out there, well, the Zippo 6-Hour Rechargeable Hand Warmer is what you're looking for, and it's available on Amazon for under $47 with shipping 
So make sure you guys check us out. Make sure you use our link when you go buy this thing for that buddy of yours or for your own glove box, jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon. You know, this is one of those things, and you know you got a buddy that has them girl hands that get really cold easy. This is one of those things that isn't doesn't seem like a big deal, but it has to do with comfort. And it, it's just so painful here whenever your hands get really cold because it was like 77 degrees today <laughs> here. <laughs> It was like 29 out here with like a 30 mile per hour wind. It was ridiculous. Well, it's, My car was like an ice block this morning. Yeah. It's supposed to be getting cold. I mean, uh, they were actually talking about a potential win- wintry, well, you're gonna get, wintry you're gonna mix. To, you're going to get down to the mid fifties. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, no, I think, I think they're talking about close to, th- uh, close to 30. So we'll be close to oh, the, wow. the 29 that you guys are at. But, wow. uh, but yeah, these things, uh, that's, I mean, it's great. The only thing I can tell you is as long as it works properly, there will be no fr- flame, but since it has a lithium ion battery all bets are off (laughs) right (laughs) yeah let's just hope it's not the same battery as in uh those uh those old galaxy uh phones or or uh or whatever there was that was blowing up on airplanes tammy i don't want to make you nervous but i just saw a wolf walk behind you i know my dog (laughs) is in here her dog her dog was barking at the door because everybody's asleep (laughs) so she had a wolf tammy she had to let the dog in the room holy cow (laughs) No, she's a Dalmatian. She's a it's, a, it's a Dalmatian. Poor thing. Oh, okay. She's Dalmatian. roaming. She's roaming the room, going, "I want to get out now." <laughs> I don't know what else to do. No, it's, it's either great. that or she barks. Yep, yep. The dogs are great. I love dogs. Uh, I'm I'm really bad about uh, people, especially if it's a new person and they got a dog. I'll spend ten minutes with the dog before I'll say two words to the human. Right. <laughs> dogs are just so great. Well, that and dogs are a lot easier to push a, put a collar and a leash on, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, it really depends, doesn't it? <laughs> Soon. So, Soon I will be so, joining you people out here with your running Jeep. So how's the Jeep running? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, progress has stopped, guys. I, I am I am in the well, midst of uh, pretty much an engine rebuild right now, doing a lot of dressing, cleaning up, and 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 stuff as well. But uh, got the head on, got everything torqued down. Pretty much most of the front of the engine is back on as well. The radiator and quartz support is still out because I'm I'm still doing some some cleanup and and some finalization of some stuff. But uh, uh, once I got the head, once I got the uh, the the new lifters in the block, I got the head on. Got that torqued down, got the push rods put in and everything like that. I realized, oh, yeah, I was supposed to have bought new rocker arms, and I didn't. Uh oh. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's about a $100 investment or more. If I want to go roller rockers, that'll be about a $450 investment, but I'm well, not building a stroker. To, so you have to change uh, lifters for that, don't you? I already did. Right, but there, you, you can't have the flat tap at hydraulic lifters. Oh yeah, if I'm doing roller rockers, yeah. So I'm no, I, I and I'm not going that route because it's it's yeah. You know, I mean, a minimum of like a four hundred dollar you know investment. I, that that's not something I'm doing. At least not Good. on this motor. At least not at this point in time. So um, looking at about uh, basically, it's an OE replacement. A new style pivot arm uh, is what I'm going with. Um, so I will be a little less friction uh, coefficient across the valve train than it was OEM, but. You know, I'm really splitting hairs here at this point, but it's one of those things where the timing couldn't be worse it's right in the middle of the holiday season. I got big dinners to plan for. I've got, you know, presents to get and all that sort of stuff. Funds are a little bit low. I'm going to try and make this happen. Um, but it looks like this might be the one thing that's going to set me back and delay me from finishing this by the end of the year. It's really the last thing that I'm waiting on. It's just, it's just going to be this rocker arm set. Um, and, and with the holidays and the, you know, everything, the shipping is going to get all messed up. It's not exactly something I can just go down to your part store and go get. And I'm certainly not going to go to the dealership and spend those kind of prices for this sort of stuff. So online I go most likely rock auto. They've got the best selection and the best prices so far from what I'm seeing. There are a couple of other options out there. Uh, Quadratech and both, uh, and four wheel parts, four wheel hardware, hardware all sell basically the same thing for within about a buck or two. Um, so I just got to do some comparisons, check out some reviews and then, uh, and then pull the trigger on that. But, uh, but that's basically the final component. Uh, you, and then this thing will be up and running. You know, I know you're going to do what you want to do, but, uh, I'm just going to kind of mention this for our listeners. The rocker arms probably have to be one of the easiest things to replace, uh, on an engine. So unless you had a damaged rocker arm, you could go with all the rocker arms that you currently have. 
when you get the rocker arms in, pop the valve cover. Uh, the gasket will be fine because it's brand new. Uh, replace all the the rocker arms. It's not like you gotta uh, you have to you know, do any adjustment to it. You just uh, right. jam those things down. That's one of the great things. There's, I mean, the adjustment like on the sh- older Chevrolet uh, engines wasn't that big a deal, but you had to set the lash and all that crap. So, but not with these. You just, no, just thankfully there's no there's no backlash that I got to set or anything like that. Um, and there's no shimming or yeah. anything like that that's going to be going to be involved or, any, or anything as well. Um, but I was I. I all the advice that I've been getting is like, no, it's not really, I mean, yes, you probably could, but it's not in your best interest to reuse the old ones. And in really doing a close examination on some of them, um, the, the, the journals on some of those, there were a couple of them that were scored pretty good. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't, I really don't want to reuse them just for the sake of, well, Hey, I don't want to put something in here that I'm likely going to end up having to replace down the road or that could cause me some issues later on. So, oh, I'm, but I'm uh, not talking about anything more than a month. I, you know, I have this fear that there's going to be a, a, a blizzard in Portland and you're going to be stuck uh, uh, with your Honda or it's going to be a snow tomorrow. A, yeah. A 600 foot wall. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. A 600 foot wall of water. A tsunami yeah. is going to come and you're going to look <laughs> at your Honda and you're going to look at the Jeep and go, damn it. I should have reused those rock arms. Yeah. <laughs> glub, know, glub, glub, I glub, know. glub. How dare you jinx me, you <laughs> SOB. Yeah, knock on wood. I'm just, just saying you could put knock it together and it'd be ready to go. It would get you out of harm's way, but that's just, you know, that's just me having fun. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. <laughs> So um, not. aside from that, I, I really quite interesting because uh, the day after we recorded last week's episode, um, or was it? The, was it? Yeah, it was uh, right around there. Anyways, um, we came up to the house and I noticed there's a couple of cardboard boxes on the front porch. And, you know, it's like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I don't remember having anything shipped to the house. It was okay. the thieves. The, they were no. sending you Honda parts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Here, put this on the car yeah. so you can steal it. <laughs> uh, no, it was actually uh, something that Tammy had just experienced. Uh, we both were actually part of this uh, national uh, Kid A fire extinguisher recall. And, uh, and oh, yeah. although I had gone through the the process of filling out the uh, the, the forms and all that online, uh, doing the the recall procedure, all that. Um, I never got any confirmation, not an email, not a phone call, not a text, nothing that said, "Hey, we got your we got your notice, whatever um, your your new ones in the mail or anything like that." There was no confirmation whatsoever. So, like six weeks later, here's this cardboard box on my on my porch, and lo and behold, yeah. I have myself a new fire extinguisher. Now, my old one was gray. This one is red, but. I will say um, that they're they're the same rated. Yeah, I knew oh, it. Jeez, you know. I almost oh. painted this thing. I swear to God, <laughs> I, know. I almost painted this thing just to avoid it's the damn bonus. Pill. It's a bonus. It's a bonus. No, but but in all seriousness, uh, in all seriousness, um, you know, this fire extinguisher, what this has over the one that is being recalled and being turned in, is a much more stout and robust handle assembly. Mm-hmm. Is that metal? And the actual, yeah, and the actual nozzle itself on the old one was just a little small plastic tube. This is an anodized cylinder. This is yeah. an anodized aluminum metal cylinder. I'm holding it up really close to the camera for uh, my co-host here to see. Um, but uh, but yeah, this thing is really substantially more or built substantially better than the one that I that uh, uh, that I'm turning in. And I got a bracket for it and everything, so it's going to mount in the same place um, as the as the fire extinguisher that I previously had in the Jeep. It's the same size and everything, so it'll go back in that cubby really well. You can't recharge those, can you? These ones, I don't think you can recharge them. I think it's so, just um, the big. I think it's just the bigger kind. Yeah, that I you think would it's the bigger ones. The, the, these, yeah, these are a, dis, a discardable uh, right. fire extinguisher, is what they called them. Because so. the the next one you buy to replace that with all the metal parts on there is going to be forty percent more than what that one cost you. <laughs> I know, right? I know. Oh yeah. Because oh. they were using the cheap plastic thing to yep. keep the prices down. Uh, it bit them in the ass. Now they have to do the the proper metal type thing to keep yeah. those access mm-hmm. wrapped. And they're going to have to make up for. Their oh loss. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, if you could recharge it, it'd be wonderful. Um. So, but you know, I don't think I don't think it's going to happen. So but anyway, yeah, you got a replacement. No, It'll. Good. How long is those things good for anyway, Josh? Years, man. Years. Oh, good. Yeah. Um. I mean, as long as I mean, really, as long as you are looking at the label, um, your your little dial indicator, and and it is in the in the full. 
you know, you, it, it shows that you're not in the red. Um, you should be good to go. All right, Tammy, you going for a Jeep ride this weekend? Uh, no. You wish you not were. Not this weekend. Yeah, I wish. Um, no, I was actually, uh, I was just checking out my um, Jeep Badge of Honor um, app on my phone because somebody suggested that I do a little video on how it works and how you check into trails and yada, yada, yada. Okay, and up pops this, you know, the first thing that pops up is this trail. And I'm like, Virginia? I didn't know there was any badge of honors in Virginia, uh, careful but there now. wasn't. <laughs> it's it's a it's a new trail that Jeep has added to their app. Oh, and they've actually added two that I know of that we've um, that people have been posting about. It's all over Facebook. Um, but the first one is 103 miles away from me. It's Peters Mill Run in George Washington National Forest, and the trail difficulty is two to four. And then there's another one in the Uari National Forest in North Carolina, the Dickie Bell Trail number 91, and that's a trail difficulty of six to eight. Now, one of the trails that I did <clears throat> in Roush Creek was a trail difficulty five to nine, so I definitely could do both of those. So anyway, I just posted um, a screenshot of this Peters Mill run picture from the Jeep Badge of Honor on Facebook, and I said, hey... Who's up for um, going on a trail ride with me? And I've got a huge list of people that are oh, like, wow, uh, yeah. So I think I'm going to do a little. It the trails closed until from January, the beginning of January till the end of March, um, just so they can during the frozen time they don't want. Um, I guess there's a lot of damage that can be done because it's also an ATV trails out there as well. So they close the trail to let the land um, heal and not get any more damaged. So um, anyway, and then we just got to talk and we were thinking of doing a whole little like trip going from the Virginia one down to the North Carolina one. There's a Georgia one and then back up to Winrock in Tennessee where they have a bunch of trails. So maybe I can get a group of people and we can do like a whole couple of day um, badge of honor trail ride. You know, so that would be kind of fun. I'm so envious of you, uh, Tammy, you live in those little bitty States up there and you can go from one to the right. other in, in 15 minutes. Uh, it's 12 hours to get out of Texas. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sure. it's always 77. Right. <laughs> Except in the summer when it's 107. All um, right. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Keep us up to so date on that. Yep, and, uh, I will. You know, I don't know if you have a camera mount to do it or you want to risk your camera, but it sure would be cool the next time you go off road to get a camera down there and uh, show those new uh, uh, skid plates, skid plates yeah. skidding over rocks and things. Well, actually, that's remember when I had to get um, towed out of that little stupid spot? Oh, you got stuck? And, yeah, when I got, yeah, when I got stuck. You said was, that would never happen. I know <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but it oh, was, it wasn't was, that bad. Okay, I was stuck on a tree stump, and it was stuck on that control arm bracket. Uh, so okay. that's, uh, that's what it was on the passenger side. Well, you just heated that little bastard up and taught it who's boss. So it's good. Yep, I did. <laughs> Well, hey, Jeepers, do you guys know of an off-road event coming up soon? Well, shoot us an email with some details. Have you been to a Jeep event? You'd like to let us know what you thought or what you saw? Well, we'd love to hear about it. Call our 24-7 voicemail line at 530-675-4102 and leave a message night or day. Nobody will ever answer that phone. It's just a voicemail line. We'd love to hear from you. Hey, the Jeep Talk Show, oh, that's us, is proud to announce that you can catch up on the Jeep news with your Amazon Echo. Add the Jeep Talk Show news to your flash briefing by simply saying, Alexa, enable Jeep Talk Show. Don't have an Echo yet? Well, just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon before buying one. Yeah, those things are pretty cool. And hey, we love hearing from our listeners, all you guys out there. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter, Google+, pretty much anywhere on the web. You're going to be able to find us. Just go to your favorite social media outlet and search for Jeep Talk Show. We'll be there. Hey, you guys remember what forums are, right? Well, we've got one. Join us on the Jeep Talk Forum. we got pictures. we got stories. we got more detailed on our how-tos. Or you can even ask questions of us, the hosts. Just go to jeeptalkforum.com. Hey, folks, and you can call us anytime and leave us a voicemail at 530-675-4102, and you may even hear it on the show. 
All those are fun. Love those. Yeah, Don't forget, are. we have a free application for your phone or your tablet. Just go to the Apple Store or Google Play and search for Jeep Talk Show. Hey, folks, and just like Tony said, making a purchase online or at Amazon, be sure and go to jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon first. And don't forget, Jeepers, we want to hear your suggestions for guest interviews here on the show. Drop us a line and let us know who you would like to hear on the next Jeep Talk Show interview. Hey, folks, and if you want to follow me and my Jeep journey and all the cool things that I'm doing to my Jeep, just head over to my blog at www.jeepmama.com. And if you need a voice for your product or your business, check out my professional voiceover services at thevoiceofjosh.com. Reach me directly, josh at thevoiceofjosh.com. Well, that's it for this week, guys. Until next week, be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. Friend us on Facebook. Circle us like vultures on Google+, Plus, and above all else, be sure to tell a friend about the one and only Jeep Talk Show. So no matter where you're wheeling, if you pack it in, make sure you pack it out. Let's leave our outdoor recreations wheeling destinations in as good, if not better, condition than they were when we arrived. Remember to always tread lightly. Please visit www.treadlightly.org. Everybody have a Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. ho, 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 ho. Casting since 2010. Well, ho, ho, ho.